Welcome back to another full bag tutorial with Emporium Threads. My name is Ray, and today we're gonna to be talking about the Dana Fanny Pack. The Dana Fanny Pack is a pattern from Lynn's Handmade Designs. It traditionally only has one pocket on the front of it, and it is a typical traditional bag when it comes to being fully lined and just kind of those typical techniques that we're using when we're making a fully lined bag. But today's tutorial is actually going to be for a hacked version of this bag. And we're gonna be doing a few things on this bag. We'll be adding an extra pocket and we'll be making it stadium and event friendly by making it completely out of clear vinyl. Come along with me as we discuss how to do this and we work our way through all of these hacks to end up with a fantastic clear fanny pack. Let's take a closer look at my example bag here before we go through all of our pattern pieces and our materials. So obviously this Dana is completely clear. You can see through all of it. Uh, so that is hack one of what we're gonna be changing about this bag today. But the second thing we're gonna be changing is this additional pocket on the top. On the normal pattern, that does not exist. It's just this one here. And while the normal pattern is great, um, I really prefer to have the additional you know, additional pocket because you get that better space. Now this becomes a little bit tricky because the normal bag obviously has linings. We're not gonna be doing any linings today except one lining right in here that is going to be our, div uh, our divider pocket or our dividing lining, excuse me, between these two pockets. So these are two full pockets. Um, additionally, things we're gonna be changing up a little bit is these are not top stitched on the side here. So we get a little bit of extra room in both pockets where we can actually put longer objects all the way from edge to edge. And the other thing that I went ahead and did just for myself, um, I have a little bit of a bigger frame. And while I love this bag, it looked a little bit diminutive on me for my size. And so I went ahead and printed this pattern at 105% when I printed off my pattern pieces. It gave me just the teeniest little bit extra. And I really did like that feeling. So you obviously do not have to do that if you want the regular size, but I found that little extra 5% really gained me a bit of extra space for larger phones and items that I wanna carry. So, um, that kind of gives you a general idea so you can design out your bag how you want it to look front side. Let's take a peek at the back side. So you'll notice a big difference here in how we're gonna do this. On the back side, we have mimicked the front pieces and we did that for a very specific reason, not just for design aesthetic, but it's actually so that we can hide our D-ring connectors. On the normal bag, um, this attachment inside here would be hidden behind our linings, but we not only don't really have linings in this bag, the linings that we do have are clear. So you will notice that, you know, you would see it obviously, you would notice them from the back if we didn't have these pieces. So we're making that change as well just to make our overall design and our look a little bit more cohesive. Um, you do not have to do that. You can go ahead and skip this part if you want to during the tutorial and have this just be one solid back. However, you will be able to see all the way through and I find it doesn't hide the seams as nicely and kind of clean up our overall finished product. So totally up to you, but um, I will be doing it as it's pictured here. So let's discuss our pattern pieces and get that rolling in our next steps of our tutorial. Here is my group of materials that I'm gonna be using today. Obviously I have my pattern pieces, just the ones that are pertinent to today's uh, hack for the clear version of this Dana pack. And we'll go over those in detail in a minute here. I've also got some pattern weights um, for rolled clear vinyl. I find that it really likes to hold its rounded shape when it's been rolled. Um, you may find pattern weights to be useful, something to weigh them down while you're cutting. Or um, after you get your pieces done, I like to lay mine out a little bit and put the weights on it to get my pieces to lay a little bit more flat. If you're having trouble with your vinyl curling, um, the clear vinyl tends to wanna do that more so than a marine pattern weights might be helpful for you. So I have a selection here for myself. Um, I have one of these cool little doohickeys that I am gonna try out today actually. That's like a, what do they call this? Like a backpack clasp or I have no idea what this is called. You can let me know down in the comments. Um, but I'm gonna be using one of these on my bag because I happen to have this color. I wanna use it up and I think it's perfect for a casual bag like this Dana. I have a couple of zipper pulls because we are going to be doing the top 
pack today for the top pocket. So you'll have um, two pockets as opposed to the one pocket that's on the normal Dana after we're done. So you're gonna need two zipper pulls. Um, I also have a scrap buster of webbing. For today's tutorial, if you've got some of these random pieces of webbing that are not quite long enough to make a full cross body strap, this is gonna be perfect, a perfect scrap buster for these. I save everything and this little bit of webbing that's not long enough for a crossbody strap will be perfect for my Dana waistband strap. So get out those webbing pieces, that's what I'm gonna to use today. I also have a coil of some zipper tape here, number five zipper tape, and you'll need enough for two zippers. I'm using this uh, super pretty like oil slick, um, dark color rainbow. Super excited about that because I think it's gonna come together nice. As far as tools, um, minimal tools today, I always keep my seam ripper and stiletto combo handy. And then I've also got a bin of clips because we're doing vinyl, so no pins today, um, just clipping. Um, and then we also have our three vinyls that we're using today. I'm using three. I've got one that's making up my main body. I've got one that I'm using inside as my liner. And then I have my green vinyl here that's gonna be making up the accent sides of my bag as well as my zipper tabs for my top zipper hack. So now let's go over our actual pattern pieces and um, I will kind of show you with my, uh, my example bag and then also the pieces that I've cut out for this bag, how it's gonna look in the end and that should help you kind of design your bag and determine how it's gonna look in the end. So here we have several of our pieces for our bag tutorial today. We're cutting out um, additional pieces of some of them that the pattern does not call for because again, we're making changes and then some of them we're gonna ditch all together. So there are a couple of pieces in your pattern that are the interior linings. We're gonna ditch those, we don't need those today. So the only pieces we're gonna need are what is called the side panel. We're gonna need that piece. We are also going to need the bottom of our front main panel. That's this part that has the little uh, notches out of it. This guy here. We're also going to need the top portion of this panel. And then we're going to need our main back panel. Now what we're actually gonna be cutting though are also different amounts than what the pattern calls for. So for that front bottom pocket, the one with the little notches out here, this guy we just need one of, as the pattern says, we need one of just the top. That remains the same. These side panel pieces, it's asking you to normally cut like this on the uh, mirror of each other, just two, one for each side for the front. We're actually gonna double up on that. So go ahead and double up what the pattern asks you to do, cut them mirrored of each other because these are actually going to serve as our back panel pieces to hide our connections uh, where our webbing and all that is, if you remember that. So we'll have two spares of these. And then in addition to this, we're gonna have our main back panel. That pattern piece is exactly as it calls for in the pattern. We're not changing anything about that, but we're gonna cut two of them. And the other you are going to cut is gonna be out of clear vinyl. That's what I'm using today. This is gonna serve as our divider between our two pockets. Now, if you don't have clear vinyl like this or you don't want to use clear vinyl, you are more than welcome to use the pattern clear vinyl that you're using if that is what you're using. But a couple of points on this, let's pretend this was assembled. First of all, um, there are two ways you can kind of do this. You can have the back of this, let's pretend that this is up against our body. The way that my example bag is, if I grab that, if you were to flip this bag over, you can still see the pattern, okay? So I put the pretty side of this back panel, what would be toward the body. Now I know when you're wearing it, you won't be able to see it. And so from the front, you can actually kind of see through a little bit. You can see through to the back side, but not much. And once there's objects in here, you really can't see. That didn't necessarily bother me to see the white through the bag. I actually kind of liked that. I felt like it gave my front portion a bit of a canvas. So depending on what vinyl you are using, you know, just go ahead and mock this up. Lay this face down on the table and facing you. And then like this was up against your body and then go ahead and lay this across the front. And if you like the way that looks, which I do, cause this is gonna be hidden. Okay, that'll be hidden just like that. It gives my, um, my pattern here a chance to pop. So that's why I wanna use clear vinyl in the middle. I don't wanna have a third layer of busyness in here because I already have busyness on the front and then I have busyness you know, on the back here. This is a little bit tough to see because um, 
we're on a white table here, but if you, you know, kind of pay attention to this right here, if we were to flip this around, it might have a different look and it might look really chaotic and busy, which I didn't care for that. I thought, see how my pattern doesn't really pop so much now? You can't really make out what exactly is going on in the bag. So I really highly recommend doing it the way that my um, example bag was, where we're putting the pretty side of this fabric toward the back while we're sewing like this, and then using that clear liner, because again, the clear liner doesn't detract at all from our bag. So we have a clear vinyl and it is similar weight to what the custom uh, vinyl is. Now for your clear vinyl, it's important to know, um, not all clear vinyl is exactly the same. Every manufacturer is a little different, but what you want to focus on when you go to a place like Joann's to buy it, or when, if you're buying it online, most places for clear especially have what they call a gauge for vinyl. And that's how we gauge the thickness of it. And what you're looking for for sewing is anywhere between a 16 and a 20 gauge any thicker than that. And you're gonna run the risk of the vinyl literally not being able to be turned or folded and it might even crack and just be really rigid and hard to work with. Um, and any thinner, then you're gonna run the risk of it uh, perforating when you sew and it will be um, just more difficult to keep it you know, sturdy and, and keep the integrity of the product over time when we're weighing it down for a bag. So 16 to 20 gauge vinyl and that is comparable to what most um, custom vinyl is. You can kind of tell by the thickness here too. It's foldable, it's bendable, but it's not super liquid, right? Thinner vinyl is very liquid and puddly. It kind of doesn't stand on its own. This stands on its own. And same with this clear vinyl, okay? This is slightly thinner and it's also gonna feel thinner because it's not printed on. So we're gonna set a few of these aside and we're gonna start working first on our front panel. All right, so for starters, for our front panel assembly, I've got the main front panel bottom portion. That is the one that's got the notches out of it here. That's gonna make the, the bottom of our front pocket. I've got my nine inch piece of zipper tape here with my zipper pull on it. If you have not done that yet, go ahead and do add that. And then I've got the top panel piece here. So we're gonna start off because again, there's no lining here. Literally all we're gonna do is take this portion, put it right sides together. We're going to sew at a quarter of an inch seam allowance and then we're going to go ahead and fold this down and then we're going to go ahead and top stitch it. And we're actually going to repeat that same exact process once we're done here, over here. We're gonna take this piece, right sides together, quarter inch seam allowance to go ahead and attach that to our zipper. And then we are going to go ahead and fold it back and top stitch there. And once we've done both of those pieces, we will have our main part of our front assembly. And then we're gonna go ahead and add those side panels. Let's take this over to the machine and we're gonna do both pieces over there together. Okay, so I have my zipper foot on my machine here. A piping foot works great as well if you have one. Super easy to install zippers that way if we've got one of these. I've gone ahead and clipped all the way down the long side here where I've attached, or I'm going to be attaching my zipper, uh, just so that we can prevent any little bit of shifting that we've got going on here. Don't need double stick tape for this or anything like that. Just a few clips to prevent shifting will be great. A couple of tips before we get started sewing here. I am going to set my machine to a longer, uh, longer stitch length. The reason for that is we don't want a super uh, close together stitch length on something like this plastic vinyl, this clear vinyl, because it can perforate and rip. Now with the gauge and thickness we are using today, we shouldn't have that problem, but you wanna make sure to deter that to make sure it's not gonna happen. So longer stitch length, for me, my default on the machine is a 2.5, that's in millimeter. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna up that to, uh, my max I believe on this machine is a six. I'm gonna go ahead and put it at a 4.5. Now that might seem a little bit long, but the reason I'm gonna do that is also this clear vinyl is a little bit sticky. With stickiness, we're gonna get a little bit of drag on our plate. Um, you can go ahead and cover this. You can go ahead and compensate in a few ways if you're having a lot of problems by either putting tissue behind this. You can um, use a Teflon foot or Teflon tape on the bottom of your feet if you're having sticky issues. Now I find 
this printed vinyl like this actually doesn't have the sticking issue because it doesn't tend to stick on the white parts right here. It only really wants to stick um, on, the, on the pretty side of the vinyl actually where it's really smooth. But lengthening our stitch just a little bit more can help compensate. Um, and then our feet, when they're pulling the material through, it can help them get a little bit more grip on that longer stitch length and pull just a little bit more to keep our stitching uh, nice and even. So a 4.5 is what I think I'm gonna do today. And uh, definitely lengthen your stitch. Don't keep it at a short stitch length, um, but definitely don't go to the max either. So it'll be a 4.5 for me. And I'm gonna go ahead and stitch all the way down this side here to attach my zipper to this piece. And then I'm gonna go ahead and turn it out and I'm gonna to top stitch at an eighth of an inch seam allowance after I'm done with my quarter inch seam allowance here. So quarter inch seam allowance first. Right, so now that we have gone ahead and attached this all the way down, we're gonna turn it out, and then we are going to go ahead and top stitch it. Now, this is important, we want to turn. When we're turning here, we're going to turn the zipper toward the bag body down here, okay? So we're not going to turn up toward the zipper like this, we're gonna turn this way. We wanna keep everything out of the way of the head of the zipper here. So we are gonna turn, and you can't iron this really. You can try to heat set it, but I find it's best if you just use your fingers, finger press it. You can use a seam roller here if you have one, and just go ahead and slow and steady. Now, when you are stitching this, you're aiming to stitch this down, all right? So we wanna make sure we're getting really close to the seam allowance right here, more between a 16th and an eighth of an inch to get really close and make sure we're tacking our zipper uh, tacking our zipper right here out of the way because we want to keep everything nice and flush on the back for um, aesthetic purposes, but also we don't have a lining to make this smooth. And if we miss this right here, our zipper is gonna be popping up here and there when we put our hand in our bag. And we don't want that. We want it to stay um, nice and flat like this and nice and taut. So as we're going just low and slow on this one, take your time, really making sure I'm gonna swap my foot to the other direction here. Um, actually, you know what, for this one, I'm actually gonna swap over here to my Teflon foot. If you have a Teflon foot or some Teflon tape, really helpful for stickiness on this. Um, I am gonna use my tried and true method of top stitching, where I'm gonna move my needle all the way over to the side here and just use the edge of my foot. That way I am certain to help catch the edge of my zipper. Okay, so I've moved my needle all the way over and I'm just, I've now folded this and kind of set it with my, with my hand and I'm lining up the edge of my foot right here on the edge, right there where the fold is. And I am just gonna fold as I go all the way down. And we're gonna go nice and slow on this one. I'm not gonna speed this clip up. That way you can kind of just watch me do the whole thing and really take my time. Take your time on this. It's an important step. Make sure to backstitch at the beginning. Okay, and we're just gonna fold it under nicely as we go, flattening with our fingers and not pulling too much. We're getting close to that end. So we're just gonna make sure we've got it all folded and flat and finish off. And 
some back stitching right there at the end. All right. So you can see what we've got here at this stage. We are literally going to repeat those two steps you just saw me do on this top portion. So we're gonna attach it pretty sides together with a quarter inch seam allowance and then we're gonna flip it up and we're gonna top stitch just the same way at a very, very close seam allowance here. And if you look here on the back, we did a great job of catching our zipper the whole way down and that's what we're aiming to do so we can keep this nice and flush and one piece. I am gonna line this piece up corner to corner all the way across here and I'm gonna clip it and then I'm gonna go ahead and stitch it. I've gone ahead and clipped this top panel piece. Important to note if your direction, uh, your fabric is directional, you probably already know this, but it should be the longer side your, your top piece is kind of trapezoid shaped. You have a shorter side at the top and a longer side at the bottom. That longer side is what you wanna be lining up here with the corner of your zipper. So that's what we're gonna be, uh, how we're gonna be attaching it here. The longer side should be the side touching the zipper right now. The shorter side should be your free side that is not pinned. Alrighty, here is our first steps of our panel all completed. We've gone ahead and top stitched both of these. Our zipper pull is on here. If you forgot that, go ahead and do it now. Our next step is gonna actually be to take these little triangle pieces on our bottom portion of our pocket. And I'm probably not gonna clip them because they're so small. I'm just gonna take it to the machine. I'm gonna hold it together and I'm gonna go ahead and stitch. But you're gonna go right sides together on this. Let me show you. We're gonna take both of these raw outer edges here and fold them over. So we've made ourselves a little straight line right here between the two pieces. We're going to sew from the outer edge into the corner here, make sure, making sure to back stitch and going all the way into the corner there at a quarter inch seam allowance. And we're gonna do that on both sides here. Well, we're here at the machine and I forgot to hit record for this little step, but all I did was fold this over and you can see I sewed, let's see if I can get that in focus. I sewed a straight line right down here. So I folded the two pieces together along the inside triangle line, lining up the two outside corners. And I went ahead and just stitched it a quarter inch seam allowance. And I did that on both sides here. So we're gonna take this back to the table and we are going to trim these down to an eighth of an inch. We're gonna trim pretty close to the stitch line here. And then we're gonna go ahead and turn this out. Alrighty, so our next step is going to be to take these little these little wings in here, these little seams that we just created, um, and right between the edge and the seam allowance, you're gonna go ahead and cut them down so that you are not too close to the edge here. I'm leaving about an eighth of an inch of the vinyl, and this will help us to be able to turn these right side out. So once you've cut both sides just like that, go ahead and turn these right side out. You might need um, a little heat if your vinyl is a little stiff to be able to poke these out nicely. And you can kind of train it with your finger a little bit here, pinch them, just get them nicely turned out. And there we can start to see the 3D effect of our pocket for the front taking shape. The next step in our tutorial is going to be to grab two of those side pieces. Mine were the lime green ones that are gonna be going along this front panel. They're the little wing shaped ones. We're gonna need ourselves a left and a right. 
go ahead and grab those and we are going to clip them all down both sides here. I like to start at the top, just here, lining up that corner. So you want both of these corners to line up, but you're going to have a, a you know gap here, a discrepancy, that's correct. You just wanna line up the two corners here. And then we're gonna go ahead and clip all the way down. Now, actually, before I do that, I am gonna trim down. I have a little bit of an overlap over here, but you can see this side is perfectly uh, in line. That's okay, that happens. Not a big deal. I'm gonna grab a pair of scissors, nice sharp ones, and I am gonna trim this down just a skosh, just so that we don't have too much of a wonky line there with my zipper that was sticking out. And I'm actually gonna clip that little tiny bit too. So I keep my angle nice. All right, I might fold that in half just to make sure I'm happy with that shape and it's all lined up. And you can see the one side has a little bit less of an angle than the other one. If you ended up with a weird angle like this, that's okay. Just do what I'm doing, go ahead and fold it and just recut your line. I have found, especially with clear vinyl, um, clear vinyl tends to stretch sometimes. It doesn't have like stretch like traditional fabric, but it can just have a little bit more give than like our normal marine vinyls or some of those marine vinyls that have a lot of stretch. So if you found yourself in that situation, just go ahead and give yourself a trim up. All right. So we are gonna take this back to the machine and we're gonna sew down both sides at a quarter inch seam allowance and then we're gonna go ahead and turn them right side out when we're all done. And we are going to top stitch down the edge on both sides. All right, so I have just completed top stitching this side and I wanted to just give you a quick tip on that before I do the second side. So when we pin this, we have pushed our corner out in order to get the right silhouette on here. But when we actually get to top stitching it, once we get down to this portion of the corner, I actually poke this inside out, you know, a bit again. So I actually put the corner back from being uh, pushed out. That way I can sew right around this little curve here and get a nice shape and silhouette. It's just a little bit easier. So on this side, when I top stitch, I'm actually gonna start on this corner. So I'm gonna go ahead and poke this right back in, not moving the clips, and see how I ended up with a good silhouette there still. Make sure you move your zipper out of the way if you need to. And go ahead and top, or go ahead and stitch, excuse me, all the way down this side at a quarter inch seam allowance. The other tip that I wanted to give you for this, um, I always keep my stiletto handy. This little corner right here is a perfect example of where it is a, a good practice to use our stiletto. We wanna get, kinda dig in on this corner and just pull it over here out of the way. The clip is holding it in place right now, but of course we're gonna have to take that off in order to start our stitch. Um, so we won't have anything holding this in place and as soon as I remove this, it's going to want to move and kind of poke out of here. So the stiletto tip is a really great thing to just kind of dig in a little bit here and sort of push this back and keep it where it needs to be underneath the needle, keeping my fingernails and my fingers away from that needle. The front of our bag is finally starting to take shape. We've now attached these side pieces and we've top stitched along here. So you may notice on your bag, or you may not, totally depends. Um, sometimes I have them where they line up perfectly across the top here. Other times I have it where there's just a small discrepancy. Um, on this one, I do have a small discrepancy. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that over to my mat and I'm just gonna buzz off this top piece here so it's nice and flat. So we have a good flat surface, uh, flat top edge, I should say, to work with here. Um, go ahead and trim yours up if you need to, and then we'll meet back here and we will start installing our lining piece and our second zipper for our other hack. 
I've gone ahead and trimmed off the top of mine so it's all nice and flat and lines up really well. I'm also gonna take a small pair of scissors and just trim off these little wings right here. We don't need those. And remember, we do have a clear bag going on here. So the extra stuff that we leave behind, we're actually gonna see. And the extra right there is just gonna add bulk and it's also going to attract attention to our seams on this clear bag. And we literally do not need those little wings. So we're just gonna trim them off and toss them away. So now that we've got our front panel piece all ready to go, the next step in this is going to be to add our top pocket uh, zipper here for our extra pocket hack. So we're gonna take a piece of matching zipper tape here and another zipper pull. I've got the zipper pull here, which I'm gonna need to add to my tape. And the piece of tape that we're gonna need for that top part's gonna be 12 inches long. Now you'll notice we're not going all the way to the edge here. And I say 12 inches, but sometimes I trim this down just a tiny bit. We wanna make sure that we stay out of the seam over here by quite a lot. So let's grab our example bag. And I'm just gonna show this to you again. So the way that I do this, I do not want my zipper tab edges. I do zipper tabs on the zipper because I do not want it to go in the edges over here. First of all, it creates a lot of unnecessary bulk in our bag because we do have connectors, we do have webbing over here, but we've also got a number of pieces being turned here and clear vinyl and the marine vinyl here on the edge can create a lot of bulk, especially for domestic machines. So I opt to do the zipper tab method here and not a butler method or anything else like that. The other reason is on the inside of the bag, this method with the tabs really is the cleanest for a clear bag that doesn't have lining to hide or uh, screen and shield us from those little pieces that are sticking off in here. Remember, our hands are gonna touch everything in this bag because there is no liner. So all those seams, all those little extra things, we're gonna touch them. And um, especially if you're selling these, you really just want a super clean result. And I really think that the zipper tabs is the cleanest way. And it also keeps you from getting those um, dented corners up here because of all that bulk. If you sew your zipper directly into the edge, especially on this side where it's closed, uh, the closed edge, you are gonna end up with a really unsightly, um, kind of gross looking zipper here. So again, zipper tabs, in my opinion, really makes for the cleanest, nicest looking outcome. And so that's what we're gonna do today. So I say, 12 inches and 12 inches worked out perfect on this bag over here, but I'm actually gonna trim just a tiny bit of that off for my bag. We do not wanna go all the way to this set of corners here with our zipper. So if I lay this right here, I can tell I'm pretty close to that edge. Um, and I want, I'm gonna probably buzz off about a half inch here. So like a generous half inch. We want that edge to be as straight as possible so that our zipper tabs are nice on here when they're all done. Let's examine this and see if that's a bit better. I think that's a much better. We're getting nice and close to the edge without going into those corner seams. So let's grab our lighter. We'll just go ahead and send that off again. So now I'm gonna add my zipper pull to my tape. All right, that's all done. Super important to keep tabs on where your zipper is. Your closed zipper should be on the left side. It's really whatever your preference is, but make sure that both of your zippers, the closed way of the zipper is the same direction. So if this is closed on this side, on this pocket, make sure that you orientate your zipper uh, to be correct. That way you don't have zippers on the opposite side. So both of my zippers are currently closed and both of my zip uh, pulls are on the correct side of each other and they match. For my zipper tabs, I am gonna take a scrap of vinyl. It needs to be about inch and a quarter wide because that's the width of my number five tape. And I'm just gonna cut myself off about a one inch piece. I kind of tend to eyeball gouge this, but if you wanna measure them out and cut them with your rotary and your grid and all that, you can do that. But this is how I do zipper tabs when they're out of vinyl. So I'm gonna take the widest part here and I'm literally just gonna sandwich this. I'm gonna sandwich it just like that. 
and I'm gonna take it over to my machine and I'm gonna stitch through all the layers, taking care to catch the back and the front. So I'm gonna leave myself a little bit of, you know, probably about an eighth of an inch from the edge of the vinyl here and just stitch right down there. And I'm gonna do that to both sides. That's the way that my example bag was done. It's the way I do a lot of my really casual bags. Because it's vinyl, it's not gonna fray and nobody even notices that little raw edge there. And it makes a really nice clean uh, zipper tab for our bag. So I'm gonna do that over at the machine and I'll meet you back here after we attach our tabs. So you should be at this stage by now. You should have your attached zipper tabs on either end of your second piece of tape with your zipper pull, and that's for our top hack. Now we're gonna kind of push this aside for just a moment, and before we get too far ahead of ourselves, we are gonna do a little bit of basting on this guy onto our clear lining piece. We've got that back main panel piece here that we cut out of our clear. Now that is going to act as the divider here between this guy, our front piece pocket here, and then our rear pocket that we're gonna end up adding. All right, so what we wanna do is we want to get this guy all, all stationed up here. Now, I have had this happen before where um, my back piece that I cut here is a little bit bigger. I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of clip this into place and then clip off the extra that I don't need. Um, this has happened to me with the clear vinyl hack, especially because we are kind of messing around with a lot of the seam allowances here that we wouldn't um, normally be. So that's okay. In the end, it's gonna come together. I'm just gonna pick a side here and I'm gonna go ahead and start clipping and we're literally just laying this down flat. We're gonna baste this all together and then we're gonna treat it as one layer. So it's like it never even happened once we're done basting it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just lay this down. I'm gonna pick a side, match up my corners, match up my curves, get it all pinned and clipped into place. Oops. And we're gonna ease all of our curves and everything as we kind of go along here. And we wanna make sure our top, that's the most important part. We wanna make sure our top lines up nice and everything is just, you know, flat looking and um, flat where it needs to be flat and kind of puffed out where it needs to be puffed out, right? And in the end, once we're done kind of nuancing all this together, we probably won't actually have that much of a discrepancy. And this is just an extra liner piece, so it's okay if we do. Let's move that. I'm gonna trim just a little bit right there. And go ahead and clip that into place. And so after we get this all clipped, and you wanna make sure you don't have wrinkles in this vinyl after we do that, because um, wrinkles in clear vinyl is gonna create a lot of bulk, especially if you are working on a domestic machine. You don't really want all that extra bulk. You don't need it, don't want it, don't have to have it. Um, this could be easier, by the way, if you wanted to. If you wanted to take this over to your rotary and mat, kind of lay it down and do it that way, that might be easier. Take this over to the machine, baste it on up, meet me back here and we'll go over the next step. Okie dokie, so here is where we are at at this point. We have basted on that rear clear layer. And if you kind of got to squishing and squashing while you were basting and you got off the edges a little bit too much and you've got a little bit too much extra, that's okay. You can go ahead and trim it if you'd like. I probably don't need to trim this, but I have a little bit of extra here and I'm just gonna clean it up. Um, if you have any extra little bits like that, go ahead and clean them up if you would like. But we have our first official pocket on this bag, which is really exciting. From here on out, we are literally gonna be treating this layer as if it's all one layer, right? As if there's not two pieces here. That's why we basted. So we're just gonna pretend like that clear layer doesn't even exist. We're gonna go ahead and take that tape that we made. We are now ready for it. We're going to go ahead and pop that bad boy on here, pretty side together. So right side down on top of this one, which is right side up. And we're gonna go ahead and eyeball this. We'll wanna open to the middle, by the way. Get that out of the way. And we're gonna eyeball this and make sure that we are more than a quarter of an inch away on both sides here. Now I'm about, uh, right there, I'm about a finger width on either side away from these corners. And that works perfect, that's exactly what I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and start pinning 
or clipping, excuse me, I always say that, pinning, but we're clipping, not pinning, and just make sure that this is where I want it to be, all lined up flush on that top edge of the project. And I'm just gonna go all the way down, just like that, clipping as I go and adjusting if I need to, making sure that this is flush and straight and centered. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and zip down this side here that we just clipped at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it this way out here when I'm all done. And I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch it at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, just like I did on this zipper, just on the one side for now. All right, we have attached our zipper up here on the top. When we top stitch this, we are going to be turning the entire thing down towards our back body like so. And when we're doing that, we're gonna be doing it all the way across, all right? We're gonna be doing it all the way across and we're going to be doing it over here into this seam as well. Right there, right all the way across. And we're gonna be top stitching all the way to the edge on both sides. So now is our opportunity to top stitch all the way across here. So make sure that you're folding this entire thing all the way under, like so all the way across. And then you're gonna go ahead and top stitch, making sure everything is all tacked down across the entire top. What we need to do is get this get these back pieces attached in such a way that they are, um, that they all line up correct when you look through all the layers, right? So I'm gonna just kind of lay this on here and let's see how we can do this. We're gonna grab our extra little wing pieces that we made and I'm just gonna kind of, after laying this on top, I'm gonna visually sort of fold this and line everything up with this other panel, right? Because I know about where I need it to be stitched and then where I need it to be, uh, where I need it to fold. We've got to account for the regular um, seam allowance we're gonna take first and then that top stitch and we want everything to line up. So where I stitched, you know, I've got two lines here and I need to kind of, get this all lined up with that original line of stitching, which is here. That's where these two edges are. So I need to make sure that my new quarter inch is lining up with the quarter inch that I did here. So I think what I'm gonna do is grab my ruler and a pen, um, a light colored pen or something that will erase if I want it to. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and mark out my quarter inch seam allowance on here. And the reason I'm gonna do that is so I can match everything up when I get over to the machine and I can make sure I'm putting everything in its right place. So let's grab ourselves a pen. And I'm just gonna mark out on the top and the bottom that quarter inch seam allowance. And let's see if that kind of helps make things a little bit easier. I'm not gonna draw a line all the way down because I don't really wanna see it too much, but I do wanna give myself a little bit of a guideline so I know so I know I'm on the right track. So we're gonna take this piece, we're gonna lay it back on here in the center, making sure we're not lining up this top edge because we need to give ourselves a little bit of spare up there. Um, so we're just gonna kind of line up in the middle. And so I'm gonna take this piece, which in the end is gonna go on that side and this one's gonna go on that side. So we're gonna start off this way. And I'm just gonna fold this back. I'm gonna line this up. And I'm going to try my best to line up right here on this seam allowance. So I think that's pretty good right there. And I'm gonna clip that just in case so I don't shift it. And then the one down here, you know, we gotta kind of follow this curve a little bit. And so we're trying to line it up as best as we can. And I think it goes, you know, right about there. I think that'll be a good, a good size or a good, um, location, let me put it that way. So now we're gonna do the same thing with this one. And so I know it looks a little bit weird, but what we will ultimately end up with, if we line this up correctly, oops, is this will be folded back. And when we flip the whole thing, all these pieces should line up just like this one did. And then we're gonna peel this one back and do the same thing over here. So 
it's all all nice and flat where it needs to be. Okay, get that out of there. And I'm gonna line this one up. That right there looks like a good trajectory for this. Okay, and then we're just coming all the way down here and I'll need to pop that over just a little bit and that right there looks perfect. So now if I remove how I did this, just to line everything up, what I'm left with is this. And so I should be kind of sticking out of the corners on the top and bottom a little bit here and there. Um, just a little bit up here, a little bit up here. We're just running that line of stitching quarter inch in from this edge right here. So pretending like none of this is even here. And then we're gonna fold it back and we're just gonna go ahead and top stitch all the way down. We don't care that this does not line up perfectly because we're gonna end up kind of folding this and we're just gonna slice all this right off. So I'll actually do that right now with my applique scissors. We're not slicing into this vinyl here. We're just getting pretty close to the edge. And we're just gonna slice all the way down. Pretty cleanly, pretty close to the edge, doesn't need to be perfect. If you wanna trim closer than that, you can. I might trim a little bit more than that. You don't wanna trim so close that you're cutting anything um, important. We're just trimming that off for bulk reasons and just so everything lines up. And you can go ahead and trim off your little wing right there as well. So you'll have a little scrap piece there. And so you're gonna repeat that on this side. So that line down, pretending like this is not here, so quarter of an inch from this edge, and then you're just gonna fold it on over and go ahead and top stitch it down. And in the end, we should be left with a piece that fits perfectly and lines up really nicely with our front piece. Now we have this piece that should line up really nicely with our front panel piece. So let's go ahead and test that theory. We're gonna line up just the bottoms. We are not going to line up the top part right this moment because we need that extra to attach to this side of our zipper. So we should have a bit of an overlap there, but here on the bottom, we should be really nicely lined up for the most part. And if we go ahead and kind of flip this, our green pieces here should line up really well with our front. So now we should have our completed back, we should have our completed front, and what we're gonna do, we're just gonna lay this guy right side up, our front panel. We'll take our back panel here, and we are going to go ahead and lay that, open this a little bit, oops. We're gonna go ahead and lay that pretty sides together or right side up. And one thing that we are making sure to look for when we do this is that once again, our zipper is centered with about a finger width on each end away from this from this edge, right? We do not want, um, we don't want our zipper to be askew. So if you want, you can go ahead and fold your bag in half and make a mark here on your tape and you can make a mark here. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna eyeball gouge it and go ahead and pin because our, our pieces here should line up pretty well and we really should not be having um, too much, you know, shifting or anything being off here. So I can just kind of tell where I need to be and I can lay this down and I should end up, um, just because of the way that this is and we haven't top stitched yet, you are gonna have this little kind of stair step here. And that's proper, that's what we should have because remember we're sewing and then we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna top stitch just like we did on the front side. So we should have a small discrepancy right now, that's okay. So go ahead and I'm just gonna line this guy back up and clip it. That looks pretty darn symmetrical to me. I've got a finger width from this side area on both sides. So we're gonna go ahead and stitch this down at a quarter inch seam allowance, and then we are going to flip, and we're gonna go ahead and top stitch at about an eighth of an inch seam allowance, catching that zipper, just like we have on all the other zippers we've done so far.
All right, so we've got our main body bag here. We are like one step away from our final, final assembly. The next step is gonna be to do our strap. Now you can do the traditional um, D-ring and strap um, connector kind of situation, like my example bag, or you can choose to follow what I'm doing today, which is going to be skipping D-rings, and I'm going to be putting the webbing directly into the seam like so. And so when we flip our bag right side out, our, you know, um, our webbing is going to be directly attached to the bag to this fanny pack. So um, what I'm using to do that is I've got one of these um, side release buckles, a little backpack um, style buckle. Um, you do see them on fanny packs a lot. They are sometimes called parachute buckles too. Um, lots of different names, lots of different styles. Mine has one side that is adjustable and then one side that is fixed. Now you know that it's adjustable when it's got um, like the triple bars here on the end, very similar to a tri-glide. And then the regular fixed side is gonna just have one bar that you're gonna loop through. But I cut myself a piece that's just a little bit longer than 12 inches. This is about 14 inches. And so I'm gonna take my fixed side and I'm gonna just feed that on in. Actually go from this side, feed it in here. And I'm gonna go ahead and first fold over, move that out of the way so we can see a little bit better. Um, I'm gonna fold over about one inch toward the back side here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and kind of sandwich that pretty close up to the buckle, just like that. So I've got a little layer of three. And I'm gonna go ahead and clip that. And I'm gonna take it to my machine and I'm gonna affix this using a, a square around the outside here, stitching. And then I'm gonna do an X through the middle to just make sure it's super secure. So that's my first side. So then this side, I'm gonna do the similar pinning, and, uh, a clipping and folding, I mean, with my tri-glide here, which I will need in order to make this um, properly adjustable. So same thing with the clipping situation here. I'm gonna go up and then I'm gonna go down through again. So I've gone around this bar, it's in the middle like that. And then I'm gonna come, um, I'm gonna fold this just like that toward the inside. And then I'm gonna just get it, you know, kind of close up here to this tri-glide housing, just like so. Same thing we did on the other side and I'm gonna just clip that into place and I'm gonna go ahead and secure it with the box and the X. And then we will add, after we're done securing, we'll go ahead and add this piece on. Just clipping that. So let's take these two over to the machine and then let's go ahead and get our uh, little imitation bar tacks going on. For this step, we're gonna go ahead and shorten our stitch length to about a three millimeter. And we are just gonna go ahead and sew as close to the edge as we can get a square. And then we're gonna go back through that square with a uh, with two crosses to make an X. So we have finished attaching our tri-glide for the adjustable side and our still buckle on the other side. We're gonna set the still side over, over, set it aside. We are going to take our long piece of webbing with our adjuster on it. We are going to lay it with the adjuster on the left side of the table. And you should be looking at the pretty side of your webbing. When I say the pretty side, I mean the side that's got the hump where we kind of fold it over. That hump should be up against the table surface. So you're looking at the pretty side of the webbing. And we are gonna make sure this is nice and flat all the way down. We're gonna shift it down a little bit so we can see our raw edge. And now we're gonna take this uh, buckle, this clasp here, and we are going to go ahead and there should be a side that's got two bars facing you, this part, uh, two bars facing you, this part right here and this part right here. And on the back side, there should be three, one, two, three. So we want the side with three versus the side with two. The side with two should be looking at you, looking up at you. Um, we're gonna put that third one like this. 
take our buckle, take our raw end, we're gonna feed the raw end of our webbing in through this top portion of the buckle. Then we're gonna feed it back through here. Oops. Pulling just like that, okay? And then we're gonna pull this all the way through for the most part, just so we make sure we've got you know a good amount of that there. And then we're gonna go ahead, keeping, uh, ensuring we're not getting anything twisted, we're gonna feed back into our tri-glide and pull all the slack so we still should be nice and flat. And then we are going to feed right back into the last side of our tri-glide here. So what we should be left with is this. We should have our buckle attached in a loop there. We should have our tri-glide attached here and then we should have a raw end. Now, I'm gonna make this as short as possible. I'm gonna leave about mm, two to three inches at the end. I'm gonna send this off again because it is fraying just a little bit, which we don't want. So um, I'm gonna make this as short as possible. The reason that I am doing that is just because I'm attaching this directly in the bag and I don't want all this bulk everywhere. Um, and so I'm gonna leave about three to four inches here at the end where I'm gonna keep it out of my, you know, out of the way of my seam allowance, this metal triglide. Um, and then we've got our, our fixed side here. So you can pick whatever side you want. Um, you know, you can kind of pretend to, to flip this and hold it up to your body and think, okay, if I'm, if I'm wearing this, um, where do I want the buckle? Does it matter to me if the fixed side's on one side or the other side? To me, it doesn't matter, so I'm just gonna pick one. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the, the bulk of my pieces, which by the way, if you want, you can kind of clip this. I am definitely gonna clip it because it's getting a little bit unruly and I don't really want all that shifting around. Um, but you want the bulk of it to go inside the bag. Okay, so we're actually gonna butterfly this back open. And this is gonna go just like this. And I'm gonna leave at least an inch out here um, because I am gonna employ some rivets on this bag, which I did not on the previous one. You can not use rivets if you want, but I think in the end I might end up riveting it. Um, we'll see. I might just top stitch and call it a day. And then same with this side. And so you want the ugly sides should be facing up right now. That way when it's on our body and it's all flipped right side out, we'll be seeing the correct sides, right? So everything goes in here toward the bulk of the bag. We're just gonna leave ourselves, you know, an inch or two, clip that in place if you, if you want. I'm gonna loosely clip mine and I just wanna make sure that I'm kind of following the, um, following these angles that are here, right? We don't want our pieces going in like this. We want them to be angled. That way we're wearing the fanny pack, you know, the, the way that um, it kind of naturally wants to hang, which is kind of off of our waist at an angle. So I'm just gonna clip both of those and um, I'm gonna go ahead and baste these in place just within the seam allowance. So I have a little bit of extra stitching to hold these in. That, that makes me happy, so I'm gonna baste it. And then what we're gonna end up doing is putting our whole bag together, we're gonna end up clipping all the way around the edge and we're gonna end up doing our final assembly, making this little bag sandwich just like this. And in the end, we will end up birthing through our zipper. So right now, before you forget, go ahead and open up that zipper at least just a couple of inches so that you can get it open. You know, halfway point is good too, but don't forget to open your zipper base to this, and then we're gonna come back here to clip everything together so we can do our final assembly. These have now been basted into place, really, really close to the edges there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start clipping this guy all the way around the edge. We're gonna be putting our pretty sides together, and we're just gonna clip, 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 and get this guy all assembled. So I'm gonna start up here on my corners because it's most important to me that those really line up and look good. So I'm gonna clip right there and clip right there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Just taking care to line all that up. 
you know, this, this clear vinyl can be a bit of a bear. Um, you just gotta massage it a little bit, you know? Same thing with some of these curves. You know, they're very gentle curves, but I know curves throw a lot of us for a loop. Um, when it comes to this front pocket, we're just gonna kinda, this little poke out here, we're just gonna kinda squish it. We're not gonna turn it all the way, um, you know, back in toward itself, but we're just gonna kinda flatten it down a little bit so that we can clip everything nicely all around the edge. Okay. I did remember to open my zipper a little bit because that is where we are going to be turning this bag. So remember to open your zipper, that is super important. Um, and then just make sure that everything, you know, feels and feels and looks good. And then what we're gonna go ahead and do is we are gonna start right up here on one side. We're gonna backstitch really good there. Um, we're staying away from our tabs. We're keeping that quarter inch seam allowance right up here. And we're just gonna quarter inch seam allowance all the way around this bag, taking care to um, top stitch or back stitch, excuse me, um, at the beginning and the end point of this bag. We are still gonna be using a uh, 4.5 millimeter stitch length on here, that longer stitch length, because, you know, still clear vinyl and we wanna make sure to keep as much integrity on the fabric as possible. I'm also gonna be stitching this with the clear liner side facing up because this clear liner side is stickier versus this side that has the exposed marine vinyl to it and also has the um, exposed printing. This exposed printing um, seems to not catch as much on the bed because it's got a texture. So I'm gonna be doing this clear lining side up. If you have issues with sticking, I suggest you do the same. I am, because of the bulk of everything here, gonna be switching out my foot as well to my zipper foot just makes it a little bit easier when it comes to bulk underneath the foot. I can get nice and close here where I need to at this stage and so much, much easier for me. So right here, uh, I got past the initial bulk up here, but I'm actually gonna switch back to my Teflon foot. I don't have Teflon tape on my zipper foot and I don't really need it any longer. Um, I got past that one bulk portion, so I'm thinking that the Teflon foot is gonna be a lot better. So let's try that and see if we get a better result. We've completed our assembly and now all we have to do is birth it. I will kind of take a peek at everything here. I do have one little um, wing right here I'm gonna trim before I turn just to get rid of that little pokey corner. Um, and everything else though is, is a nice smooth curve. So I don't really need to trim anything, I don't think. Clear vinyl can be difficult. So if you have to employ a heat gun on a low setting and far away from your bag, um, do not overheat it and birth very slowly, especially if you're using heat. You do not wanna stretch your vinyl and you do not want to perforate the clear vinyl. All right, as you can see, I completed my Dana with my clear vinyl and my extra pocket on top. I hope you completed yours as well. Thank you so much for joining me for this tutorial. And if you enjoyed it, I hope that you give my channel a like and subscribe. That way you can join me for future tutorials. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Here I am wondering why nothing is sewing. My feed dogs are down. Let's go ahead and put the feed dogs up. That's super important.